Hello. My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here. Practicing to take the GRE general test, the 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 302, quantitative comparison question, hence the QC, number 12. Let's take a look at it. In the first column we have area of a square this thing's no good it's not legible area of a square so we know that we are dealing with a square let's say square region you know it's a square region not a square with a perimeter of 24 with a perimeter of 24 what does perimeter mean? I hope you know it perimeter simply means sum of all the sides sum of all the sides that's what perimeter means and we have a square square of course obviously has two four, four sides uh, not two four Square of course has four sides, four equal sides, which is what makes it a square. And we are told that when you add up all the sides, we get 24. That's what perimeter is. It's the sum of all the sides. Doesn't doesn't have to be square. Doesn't have to be triangle. It could be any shape. It could be it could be something insane like this. The perimeter of this picture, if you were to talk about the perimeter of this picture, will be the sum of all the sides. This one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, a dozen sides. So what do you know? So if you add up all these 12 sides, the sum of those 12 sides will be referred to as the perimeter of this thing. Alright? In other words, in other words, it doesn't have to be some sort of a neat sort of a neat sort of a picture. What about the perimeter of this guy? Actually, that's not a bad looking circle. I hope somebody is taking a picture of it. I hope somebody is recording it even though I say so myself. Anyway, um, I'm being silly. Uh, what, do we, what do we call the perimeter of this guy? Well, and when we're talking about circle, the equivalent concept, concept that is equivalent to perimeter, when we're talking about a circle, since circle is such a, such a unique, such a, such a special shape, that we have given it a special name, the, the distance of all, the distance all the way around the circle, which is what the perimeter is, we have given it a special name and we call it circumference. That's what it is. The circumference of a circle, that's what it is, it's the perimeter of the circle. I don't know why I had the urge to actually talk about that. But anyway, so here, perimeter is 24, so that tells me that uh, I'm dealing with a square, four sides, and each side better be 6. Because 6 times 4 is 24, obviously. Therefore, the area of this guy, which is what we're talking about, which is what we're talking about, area of this guy, the area of this guy is going to be six times six, thirty-six. Let's move on to the next column. Next column is where the things are going to get prickly. This is pretty straightforward. This is all. This is all done. There is no doubt about what this guy is. Is the guy in the next column? You have to be careful about because he's a slippery customer. I learned these phrases and expressions and all that and I figured, hey, why not flaunt them, right? Slippery customer, I don't know where I picked it up. The area of a rectangular region with a perimeter of 28. Ah, so here we're dealing with a rectangle. So, here's your rectangle. And we are told that the perimeter of this guy, which is length plus width plus length plus width in other words 2 times length plus width we are told is 24 if 2 times length plus width is 28 rather we are told that it is 28 
Of course, I tend to explain a lot, but of course, when you're doing it yourself, you don't have to explain it to anybody, so you can just keep on going. I explain a lot because uh, one never knows uh, wh who one is dealing with. Rather, whom one is dealing with, not who one is dealing with. One never knows uh, whom one is dealing with. So I have to explain everything because I don't know what your background is. So anyway, so therefore, the length plus width, if 2 times length plus width is 28, that tells me the length plus width of this picture, this plus this, has to be 14. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to break up the length and the width so that they add up to 14. Well, the simplest way to start, the easiest place to start is to split them up evenly, 7 and 7. 7 plus 7 is 14, but I can't do that because if I were to do that, this, uh, this uh, rectangle uh, would, uh, would metamorphose into a square. We don't have a square, we have a rectangle, so I can't do 7 and 7. Let's do 6 and 8. Let's do 6 and 8. Let's make the length 8 and the width 6. 6 times 8 is 48. Based on the work that we have done so far, based on, based on the work that we have done so far, what does it tell us? What does it tell us? It tells us that the answer is B, the quantity in column B is bigger. Notice how I phrased it. I, 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 equivocate, I equivocate it. I qualified my statement to qualify the statement means to attach strings to it. Uh, the colloquial way of saying the whole thing would be to put conditions on it, to, to limit it, I, to equivocate it, to, to uh, uh, what's the other word I'm looking for here? Anyway, that's, that's what it is. To, to qualify means to, to, to put conditions on it. The conditions that I'm putting here is that based on the work that we have done so far, the answer is B. I did not say the answer is B. I said I qualified it by saying that the based on the work that we have done so far, again, look it up. Look it up in the dictionary and learn it properly. Of course, it has two meanings. The first meaning of the word qualify, everybody knows it, is the second or third meaning in the dictionary that you're going to find, which will talk about uh, putting conditions on something. Based on the work that we have done so far, the answer is B. What does it tell you? Does this tell you does the, work, the amount of work that we have done so far? Does it tell you what the answer is? No. It does not tell you what the answer is, but it does tell you what the answer is not. And I'll explain to you in a second. Let me look in the camera first, see how much time I have left in the back. Just one second. I'm eight minutes into it, so I have to wrap it up. What does it mean when you pick answer choice A? When you pick answer choice A, if you look at the top of the page there, on the very top of this page 302, if you look at it, there are instructions there. It says A, if the quantity in column A is greater, insert a word there with your, with your, with your pencil, insert a word that I'm going to give you. A, if you pick A, what it means is that A, if the quantity in column A is always greater, that's what you're claiming. When you pick B, what you're claiming is that the quantity in column B is always greater. And if that claim turns out to be a wrong claim, then that answer obviously is wrong. When you pick C, if you pick C, what you're claiming is, this, is that the two quantities are always, always, always equal. Well, this work does not tell me what the answer is, but it does tell me what the answer is not. I know now, based on the work that I've done so far, I know that the answer is not A. Answer is not A because A would have meant that the quantity in column A is always greater. Well, the quantity in column A could not bloody well be always greater because I found one instance when it's not. Quantity in column B is bigger. I also know that the answer cannot be C because C would have meant that the two quantities are always equal. Well, they cannot bloody well be always equal because I found, found one instance when they are not. So it's either B or D. So what do I do next? Well, now we try the kinky things. Again, since I'm running out of time, you have to go back and watch my other videos. There are plenty of them on the, on the YouTube. And on many of the videos, I talk about the nice numbers and the nasty numbers. Since I don't have the time right now, I'm running out of it, so I'm not going to go into detail into it. But the nasty numbers are 0, 1, negatives, and fractions. That's what you have to try. Well, I can't try 0 because you can't make one side equal to 0 because if you make one side equal to 0, the rectangle will cease to exist. It will become a straight line. We cannot use negative number because you can't have a side of a negative 9. You could try a fraction, but why try a fraction? You always go in disorder. 0, 1, negative, and, and fraction. So let's try 1. I'm going to make one side equal to 1. 
If I make one side equal to 1, and since they have, they have to add up to 14, the other side would have to be 13. All of a sudden, this, is a, this rectangle does have a perimeter of 28. 1 plus 13 is 14, and another 14 will make it 28. But all of a sudden, it has an area of 13. Before, it had an area of 48. 48 compared to 36 gave me the answer of B, but now 13 compared to 36 gives me the answer of A. Now it gives me the answer of A. Since I have conflict, since I'm getting conflict, since I'm getting conflict in the answers, before I was getting B, now I'm getting A. Since we have conflict in the answers, therefore the correct answer is D. That's all. The correct answer is D. It cannot be determined. Depends on the depends on the dimensions of the of the of the, of the two sides of the rectangle. I hope you found it helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, I do face-to-face -face tutoring. I also tutor over the telephone. I also, most, a lot of people find it helpful. I was surprised myself when I first uh, tried it and then I got a response from it. And I also tutor over the internet through Skype. If there is anything at all that I can help you in your preparation for the GRE, you can purchase solutions from me and so forth. Go to my website at www.prep.gre.com and send me an email. All right? Or you can go to www.keshwaniprep.com, okay? And send me an email from there as well. Thank you. Well, not there as well. It's the same website. Thank you.